Lately, I've been finding a lot of mystery in the most unexpected of places. Scrat is a terraforming alien, Gary is God, the trumpet guy from Shrek 2 is a cult leader, you know the drill. So imagine my surprise when I discover something that's actually up front with its peculiarity. This has been handed to me on a silver platter and I couldn't be more grateful to myself. The Madagascar franchise is composed of four films, a few TV shows, and a litany of shorts. Throughout them all, we bear witness to characters of all sorts, including the most deeply disturbing. Genetically anomalous piece of nefarious, uncanny terror known to cinema. He tries to act cute and cuddly, but he does it maliciously. He knows people see him for what he is, and yet he behaves childlike anyways just to freak them out. His name is Death, for he is Mort the Lemur. I was browsing the Madagascar wiki, as any sane person should do on a regular basis. I couldn't help but notice that there are a number of references in the TV shows that imply him to be wrong in every categorical sense. Thankfully, because of this, I finally have something solid to work with. Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and Mordecai is certainly not, unless he were to reap my consciousness from my body, which he cannot do. I'm immunized to him by nature of the fourth wall. Before we establish all he's done, I need to get the first big theory I have out of the way, that being the timeline of the canon. This is going to get very confusing very quickly because of the nature of the Penguins of Madagascar TV series, the likes of which a timeline placement is dubiously considered amongst even the writers themselves. They claim that people shouldn't care about its placement unless they are top-tier animation geeks with way too much time on their hands. Well, I'm neither. I'm an incredibly dedicated, incredibly serious fictional theoretician, and I'm paid to do this. Brushing aside minor flashbacks like the intros to Madagascar 2 and the Penguins spin-off movie, or the short films which take place all over, the timeline essentially looks like this. All Hail King Julian is a prequel followed by Madagascar the First. The Penguins of Madagascar Nickelodeon show is an outlier. Typically the rest of the timeline would go Madagascar the Second, Madagascar the Third, and then the Penguins movie. But the Penguins of Madagascar TV show takes place in the zoo with King Julian and friends there there, meaning at least after film one. The question then becomes, does it take place long after everything, including the fourth movie, or does it take place between the Madagascar films somehow, or in a parallel universe variant of where films two or three should be? It's tricky because all could work. If option number one is the truth, then it means the penguins quit their spy jobs, and the lemurs quit the circus, and in the far, far future they all exist back in the zoo. If it's somehow between films 2 and 3 or 1 and 2, then it would mean the penguins and lemurs shunned the zoo gang and temporarily returned without them. The final choice is that they left permanently and stranded them either on Madagascar or mainland Africa, depending on when is more likely. The creators seem mixed on which of these is the truth, but for now, we focus on the characters. These three options, however, will come in handy later. It's most likely after everything, or a parallel reality, though. Now that we've theorized on the possible placements of the Penguin's spin-off, we move on to the questions surrounding Mort. It is overwhelming, I assure you. First of all, Mort? <laughs> He's not a child. He may look like a child. He may act like a child. He may sound like a child. But he is at minimum. 35 to 50 years old. This is no joke. All Hail King Julian is weird. In fact, so weird that the crazy is just beginning. Mort is a Microcebus Lahilahitsura on the outside, but the inside proves him to be far, far more sinister. He is a potbelly pig. But that's not all. He's also part bear, part starfish, and no joke, part spider. He also has trace elements in his genome of sand, cacti, copper, and sawdust, and it doesn't end there. He has a disturbing marriage history. He has not one, not two, but eleven ex-wives, and all of them are dead. He is also invulnerable and has superior strength due to his delusional and obsessed nature surrounding King Julian's feet. He's a yes-man that eats glue, and he's such a quizzical little rat. Finally. It's revealed that whatever he is, 
is immortal and has the terrifying ability to suck the souls out of similar species, absorbing them into his mind and creating a split personality. Again, a lot to work with. With that said, clearly this will take some time. I recently stretched five seconds of trumpet playing during Shrek 2 into a 10 minute depth analysis. This time we have something solid. There is more Mort, there will be more content. This is going to be more of a documentary than a theory, be warned. There's more discussion and analysis here than hypothesis. I am aware that I will have to watch every single episode of Penguins of Madagascar and then every single episode of All Hail King Julian. I foresee that this endeavor could span at least a couple of years, which means I'd need to update you along the way. Thus, solving Mort will likely take a grand total of 15 videos, adding up to 4 hours. If I can condense it properly, of course. Based on my current upload schedule, every third video I post until spring 2022 will be a Mort analysis. The question is, should I do this? I need an empty 230 square foot room to organize my thoughts because a single notepad clearly won't cut it and I'll need to invest in 8 cork boards and around 250 meters of twine. The immediate true mystery is, what can I do with this now? From what I understand, there have been a couple of videos discussing Mort and a couple of Reddit posts. I refuse to watch or read them for fear of a skewed conclusion, and I don't know how serious or non-serious those discussions are to begin with. With that said, I can organize a battle plan for this miraculous hit piece. This is part one, which means part two and three will also share the theme of highlighting evidence, with many theories along the way. I will spend the rest of this video looking at Mort's oddities within the Madagascar movies, and then spend video number two looking at him in Penguins, finally topping up the first trilogy with video 3, his strangeness in the prequel series. The second trilogy, videos 4, 5, and 6, would then need to begin cross-connecting the clues and formulating more major theories from the smaller ones. I'll probably spend one video on his Julian obsession, one video on his wives, and one video on his soul-sucking immortal and impossible genome. Videos 7, 8, and 9 I have a more strict plan for. They are going to be composed of past theories I am integrating in. 10, 11, and 12 I am going to connect them. I'll spend one video connecting Mort's mysteries to Over the Hedge, one connecting them to my Dubois analysis, and one connecting them to a final mystery film or straight up creating a grand unifying DreamWorks theory from what I've found. Which leaves us with 13, 14, and 15. I'm still debating whether or not I'll actually need the extra hour or extra three videos, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. There's also the matter of how this will perform in the YouTube algorithm. Now that you're all prepared for what's to come, we begin with the evidence you'll all be familiar with. Mort in the Madagascar films. In the first movie, we meet him. Mort is a small lemur obsessed with King Julian, and is sort of the opposite of King Julian's actual second-in-command, Maurice. Mort is used as a test to see how the New York animals will react to lemurs, and is generally hated by his peers. He plays a perfectly fine but intentionally annoying role in film one. In the sequel, he clings to the plane and behaves oddly. He first parodies the Twilight Zone and then goes flying thousands of feet into the Mozambique Channel. He stubbornly survives and then is chased by a shark all the way to Central Africa where he ascends a volcano and nearly falls in. The third film follows him joining the gang in the circus where he, again, plays a lesser role, but he does end up shooting Dubois with a tranquilizer gun. He's dumb at times, rational at others, and sort of all over the map. This is what makes him questionable. Primarily, what the films are good for is proving one thing, Mort is not mortal. Our dear friend, the French Death is indestructible. He looks malicious at first, on the wing of the plane, because he's probably one of his alternate personalities, more on that later. He rips it apart and causes the engines to fail, crashing the plane soon after. When he presumably flips back to the dumb old Mort persona, he falls off, sails thousands of feet into the Indian Ocean, and doesn't die. He is pursued by a juvenile great white shark and evades it, though it desperately chases him on land as well. Mort doesn't die, which is the first crucial chunk to the theory that from this point, can only evolve. With that said, it can only get more insane from here, so should I? He's such an enigma that while writing this I was convulsing like a deranged artichoke. <sighs> Speaking of the Soviet Union, it won't be long before I integrate Nana into this dissertation. Again, it'll probably be in the latter half of this journey, but everyone make sure you're caught up with my other DreamWorks theories, just in case. For now though, subscribe so I know to make more of this, and comment Mort's odd moments from the shows and give me a little head start. Uploads may be scarcer a tiny bit here, my confused immune system has been attacking me for two and a half years now, but it's gotten really agitated in the past month and it's made me too anemic and unfocused to think to my fullest, but when I get my hemoglobin out of its seven gram per deciliter hole, I assure you, I will start critically thinking a bit better. 
and we'll be able to fully expose Mort as the war criminal he is. This was an establishment video laying it all out on the table, solving the timeline, and looking at his film appearances. It only goes up from here. Until my next video in the coming weeks, I am The Theorizer. Thank you.